afterthoughts. I said I wasn't going to say nothing else about this year electrolysis, but what I'm doing yonder is just giving these wars the uh, courtesy straightening and, and if you use a different kind of war, this is soft iron war. It has no coating on it. They call it mechanics war. If you use a like a electric fence war that's got that plating on it, you will end up with a different kind of off gassing. Uh, uh, galvanized zinc plating is not good but but now what I'll do what what I'll do is I, I will war up a whole new batch and and charge that tank back right now uh, get it going but but the afterthoughts is this is one of those processes that it works good it does have it does have cautions along with it just the process it's in itself is um, it can be dangerous if it, if you if precautions is not taken simply because of electricity in the vicinity even and the off gassing such as it is but the parts that we cleaned up is uh, that one it's it's perfectly clean that part that part that part nuts two washers the weights oh well, i'm gonna show you something on them weights the other part and the springs i show you something these springs right here now now this this spring right here cleaned up it made contact this one did not so i'll, I'll put it back in there and 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 both of these adjusting screws this one was down in there that four and, and and both of them was rusted tight okay once i put it through the electrolysis took it out then i could unscrew this by hand didn't need to, uh, any assistance to get that out of there but as you can see right there about right in there is where that thread is at like that okay the part from here down it didn't clean because it's a line of sight and when it was when it's down in yonder when it's down in yonder it can't see it so so what what I'll do is I'm gonna put this back in the tank and then it'll clean the rest of it and, 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 and it will not erode any metal away from the threads it'll be the same size when I take it out this is this is this is good to go that's good to go that's a nice one right there that one will go back in there the and there was one spacer washer that did not clean at all that'll go back in there once i and, and, and a good way to do that is to take a countersink and go right right on the inside of of something on both sides i'll show you now, see, so you got that shiny place all the way around yonder, and that shiny place around there. Also, you removed a little burr as you was going. Now, now, when you when I put this back in there, I'll uh, I wore it up uh, uh, tight enough to where that that will make contact like that. Now, now that'll make electrical contact across there. And and the other part that didn't clean up was this uh, adjusting part onto the governor and and that's the same same story just run a, a countersink right there and right there and that put some bare metal and now i just put that right down on yonder and that'll make contact and and the next time it'll clean uh, no loss and then this this uh set screw and locking nut uh cleaned it as a a as a that nut was right there and cleaned that it came right off and also I, I will, I will, I'm going to put that back in the tank too I'll just I'll show you just it's it's got good threads right there it just was not clean enough for me so so I'll put that back in there that's good and tight so that and that will clean the threads up 
And this this process compared to sandblasting, and, and you all know I don't use sandblasting. I know about it, have done it in the past, and uh, I just don't endorse it uh, as a go-to way to clean rust. Because that thread right there, if you sandblast that, soda blasting, glass blast, uh, oatmeal, you know, most any blasting media that you use, it's the process. It's not what you use, it's the process. It's going to remove some minuscule amount of metal. Those, the valves that we put in there, and I know mean, these valves ain't no good. It's just that, that they were rusted so bad, I wanted to, to use them as an example. So you can see that they're really, really clean enough to use a micrometer on them. That nerve's bent even uh, to see the, the size. And, and there's uh, just, well, so that cleaned good, that cleaned good. And that's a two, two different kinds of metal, cast iron head and some type of steel shaft. I don't know what that is. Some of them's hard. The um, the 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 governor shoe. It. I, I'm not sure about the light, but you know it cleaned it up, and you can see as cast metal. The cross piece up there. I did just run it on the water brush, and and like I say, I've been using this right here for a year or two, and if you micrometer, it's the same size, no erosion. And, uh, uh, and like I say, this process, if you want it to work, then it will. But if you're trying to disprove it, then, you know, it's easy to disprove this. Uh, the, and, and it, you know, this is a good example of what it will do. I do have a little cleaning right in there. And, and if, there's, if there's a place for that you can't get the war brush to, and this would be easy enough to knock that pin out and disassemble this whole part. If it's the only one I had, I would do that. But I've got some more. I really don't need to disassemble one. But you know, it, 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 you, it, it's, it's on, the part will only be as clean as you want it to be. If you want that down in yonder, if you want that gone, then you can figure out some way. Uh, uh, this is another tool right here. I use this tool about every day. It's a it's some kind of crochet needle or something. It's got a flat place right there, and the end of it was really hard. And I've used it up now. You can see I've sharpened it almost away. But I, I use this almost every day because of that flat place right there, and 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 this what uh, just happened to have it. But you know if you've got a little place right there where there's something there that that needs to be cleaned then, you know, dig out whatever it is that you need to do that with. You know, just because it's over in yonder ain't no, ain't no reason to let it go. And there was something in there I needed. And there's a, there's a couple more. I, I, I will. That's pretty good. I'll run a wire brush across through there off camera. I got a little one that'll go through there. So, and, and you know, I, I'll probably go ahead and... Uh, let me throw this in the bin. I probably primer this right here, and then when I get ready to use it sometime later, then I'll I'll redo it then. And you say, well, how can, why do you prime it if if it don't rust? And uh, it's just a little added precaution. As is, uh, different types of uh, metal wash. Yeah, you 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 can you can. Put these in some metal wash like that Eastwood uh, and fast etch. You know, you know, you can you can actually etch a part. Uh, it's supposed to make paint uh, stick better. Uh, but I, you know, I use rust oleum pretty much a hundred percent, three coats and and rusty metal primer, and I have no problems with it. You know, some some people has problems with it, gas taking it off or heat such as that. And uh, if you use it as intended, it'll work for you. And these two, I'll show you something really quick. Uh, these two weights right here. Now, now this weight right here, when I took them three or four parts and brought them over there to the war brush, I, I was talking and doing something else, piddling around over there. And so this, this laid out between the tank and the war brush for some time. 
So, and, and you can see, actually, you can see some rust on it, some flash rust, because I let it dry before I wore brushed it. So this will go back in the tank, you know, just, just, it's that easy. I mean, it's clean. I mean, that's, per, that's fairly clean, but it's not clean enough for me. So, so I will put that, I'll put that, right, this much right here, um, I'll, I'll put them back in there. I mean, I'm going to load this whole thing all the way up, but, but that's the process. And this one here, I just came from the tank and war brushed it, and so it's, it's good to go. You know, like I say, it's one of those processes that, uh, and if you've tried, if you have tried electrolysis and, and, and it didn't work for you, uh, you know, uh, do a little studying on it and give it a, give it a, another try because it is cheap, it works, and you'll save some parts that you didn't think you could save. Now, someone's going to say, why, why, why don't you clean a cast iron skillet with this? And you can, but... If you take a skillet from your kitchen, if you just get a skillet off of the cook stove and you bring it and put it in this process, then then you may not get any reaction because there's no rust there. You, you, you have baked on a coating onto that skillet, that black coating on there, that's not rust. So in order for this process to work, then you have to let that skillet rust. Um, you know, put the skillet on the barbecue grill and let it burn all of the black part off to bare metal. Throw it out there in the yard, let it rain on it a couple times, and let it rust. And then put it in the electrolysis tank, and you will end up with a very, very clean cast iron skillet. Yeah, one of the comments is going to be. You said that was the clean way to do it. Electrolysis the clean way. You've you've told us something that ain't right. Well, th this right here, that's as dirty as I, as I have got. It's 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 uh, it's whatever that is. And when I go wash my hands, they'll be really really clean, really clean. The um, uh, and and this is. <laughs> it's really not dirty for me uh, because I work on engines. After me on the East Coast, Arkansas, shop dog Sam, on with the show.